Ranger Alyssa, and this is Ranger Roy with me here today. And welcome to our week five of our fall 2020 update videos. We are going to be premiering these on Facebook and YouTube every Thursday at 2 p.m. And during these videos, we are going to share uh, peak checks. We're going to have a Ranger talk about a special topic. And we're also going to be sharing some travel tips that'll help you during your visit at Shenandoah. We also have pictures that we're going to share at the end of the video and during our peak check just to show you what it looks like in the park. And you can also find those pictures on our website, our social media pages, and we wanna see the pictures that you're taking while you're in the park. So please share those with us and make sure you include a location and date. And on top of all of that, we still have our Chronolog time-lapse project. Ranger Roy, would you mind sharing a little bit about that? I would love to. So we're here at Pass Mountain Overlook in Shenandoah National Park. And uh, since about the beginning of October, we have set up a, a, a time-lapse station called the Chronolog site. And for this to work, what you do is when you're driving the drive is you stop at this overlook and you place your phone in the bracket that's provided and then you uh, take a picture using that frame that, that, that we provide to you. You take a picture, you upload it to the Chronolog site and then almost instantly you can see how your picture gets mixed in with the other photos that visitors have been taking. And we've created now, what is it, about a three week long time lapse yeah. that shows the fall colors progressing throughout the season. It's pretty cool. It's really cool. So um, with that, all the pictures that have been taken here at Pass Mountain, we're gonna go ahead and look at Neighbor Mountain behind us. And there's still some color up there. It's actually more color than there was last week, which is really exciting. And there's still gorgeous color all throughout the park. And we do have 100 miles of Skyline Drive, so it's going to continue to show color, and especially the lower elevations. Um, some of the higher elevations still have some color, uh, we have a little bit more of a leaf drop up there just because of the colder temps, especially the colder temps that we experienced this past Friday and Saturday. We had some hard freezes, but there's certainly some more color up there if you just stop at one of the overlooks or maybe go on a short hike. There's a broad range of color and landscape you can see, and you're definitely going to take some good pictures and have a great view. Um, but we do have some rain in the forecast this weekend, but don't worry, we're gonna talk about how you can prepare for that in our travel tip section. But most of the color should not be affected by the rain and the forecast, but maybe just a few more, um, there might be a little bit more leaf litter after this weekend. So anything else you'd like to add with that, Ranger Roy? Uh, what I would just <laughs> say, going back to the chronolog, is that I've been watching the sumac behind us just turn vibrant red over the last few weeks, and you can really clearly see that in that that time lapse uh, so yeah there's still there's still a lot of color here yeah. and a lot of color to come right here in the pass mountain area yeah i've even had some of our rangers describe the color it's like a brownish yellow with a pumpkin spice which is you know pretty <laughs> favorite. The flavor of the season <laughs> yeah it is so <laughs> look out for those colors when you're here too all right so we are going to toss it over to ranger rolf and he is going to bring us a bear talk for me black bears are are fascinating animals um, they're not just intelligent and they're considered some of the most intelligent um, members of the order carnivora. So that's, they're considered more intelligent than cats and dogs and, and weasels and things like that. They're not just intelligent, but they have curio curiosity, natural curiosity. Um, they exhibit learned behavior. So, so the sow, the mom can teach their cubs how to do things, how to manipulate things to get ants out of a rotten log or how to, in, in a bad situation, how to open a car door or even a locked car door at Yosemite. I know that's not something we want to focus on, but just the fact that they can figure out how to open a locked car door is fascinating. So our black bears in the park are putting on weight right now. They're eating upwards of 20,000 calories per day. They're eating things like acorns, hickory nuts, insects. Uh, they're scavenging on deer carcasses. They're trying to put on weight uh, to gain fat for the winter and that's a period that we call hyperphagia. Our bears at Shenandoah National Park typically hibernate or go into what's called winter torpor. Uh, in a mild early winter, some of those animals may not truly hibernate. They may be active uh, throughout most of the winter. It's not unheard of. Bears rely heavily on acorns and hickory nuts and these, these things we called hard mast. Um, this year at, at Shenandoah, we have a um, sort of a lack of, of acorns at the higher elevations, but it seems like the acorn production is pretty good below 2,100 feet. So as a result of that, 
we think we're not seeing very many black bears at the higher elevations along Skyline Drive, along our developed areas, and they're pushing down into these lower elevation areas where there's more acorns, where there's more food. Uh, wild apples is another form of, uh, of food that they use in the, in, the, in the fall. I think this time of year and in general, the best places to see a bear would be to go hike trails. Uh, trails especially in the central portion of the park, maybe even in the southern portion of the park. So getting out into the backcountry, getting out into the wilderness areas is probably your best chance to see a bear. If you're hiking, you're generally trying to give a bear 50 yards of space. That's our regulation for viewing bears. That's four bus lengths. Sometimes you come up on a bear and it's within that 50 yards. In those instances, um, you would typically uh, stand your ground, make yourself aware to the bear, you make yourself apparent to the bear by speaking loudly, um, clapping your hands. Uh, don't run from a bear, you just want to stay put, you want to stay in a group. Uh, if the bear persists, you may want to wave your arms, you may want to clap, um, and then if you have to, you may want to detour around that bear if it still persists. So the big reason that we always are stressing the importance of storing your food properly and managing your trash is because we don't want bears to get food conditioned, become reliant on human food. If that happens, bears can become uh, more aggressive towards humans. Uh, that means that they may need to be trapped and relocated. It may mean that they eventually have to be euthanized. We don't want to have to do that to a bear. So when we talk about trash, we also have to remember that micro trash, what we call micro trash, is an important aspect as well. So micro trash includes things like candy wrappers, ketchup packs, um, an apple core, those things uh, can really attract bears. Uh, again, bears have this incredible sense of smell and micro trash can bring those bears in. So we ask that folks don't throw those items on the ground. Those are considered trash. So pick up your micro trash, pick up your candy wrappers, make sure it gets in your trash bag and that gets into the dumpster. That's really important. Uh, the park has done a really good job in the last several years of adding additional bear-proof dumpsters and additional bear-proof trash cans. And uh, if a dumpster happens to be full on a high-use weekend, try to find another empty dumpster. Uh, just don't stack or just don't uh, plop your trash bag down on the bottom of that dumpster. Um, that will be a huge attractant to wildlife, not just bears, but, but raccoons as well and skunks. If that stays out overnight, uh, that can result in a food reward. And again, we don't want to have bears or other animals obtain food. At Shenandoah, we have an active human bear conflict management program. Over the last 20 years, we've added additional bear-proof food storage lockers and campgrounds. We've added additional bear-proof uh, dumpsters. We have an active crew that actually goes around and talks to visitors about how to um, properly behave in bear country. And we also sometimes use different strategies and tactics to haze bears away from developed areas, bears that become too comfortable around humans, uh, too comfortable around campgrounds. So we use different tools, things like portable air horns or um, projectile noisemakers to push those bears away into more wild areas. So Shenandoah offers this sort of unique opportunity to see bears in the mid-Atlantic region in the central Appalachians. Uh, and we have a high density of bears here at Shenandoah. So if you're coming from Northern Virginia or DC, you only have to drive an hour and a half to see these bears in their natural habitat. It's really pretty, quite unique. Thank you, Ranger Roth. It is true that a lot of us go on hikes in Shenandoah National Park in hopes that we see a bear, but then it could become a little bit overcrowded on some of those trails. And even though that we love that you guys are coming to the park to hike our trails, and we have more than 500 miles of trails here, so there's plenty to choose from, uh, it's really important that we pre-plan and take the proper precautions before you show up to the park. So um, some of those safety regulations can be found on our website, but we're gonna go into some of those that we really think that you need before you arrive. It's also a really good idea to go on our website or even use our app to find a hike that you want to do, and then you can print it or you can save it and download it on your phone. So when you arrive here, you know where to go and which hike you're gonna do. And then you can also plan an A and B and maybe plan C hike just in case it's a little bit crowded on the trailhead in the parking area so you can move on to the next one. Um, we've also added a suggested hikes um, to avoid crowds onto our hiking page on our website. So be sure to check that out if you really just want a peaceful hike 
to yourself and maybe some bears that can share it with you. While you're on our webpage researching what possible hike you might want to take, be sure to head on over to our 10 Essentials for Hiking Safely section of the website. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of good information there, but we're going to focus on just a few things that are really key for this time of the year and then a, a couple of general tips for people hiking in the park. First thing that you want to do when you're planning a hike is make sure that you don't bite off more than you can chew. Make sure that the hike that you are planning fits within your physical ability. And one easy way to do that is to look on the website, read the description of each of the hikes, and it will tell you how strenuous the hike is. So once you've done that, um, you might want to go ahead and print that map because you can't count on good cell phone service in the park. So either print a copy of it or save it to your phone for offline viewing. Yep. Now that you've done that, you'll definitely want to let someone know where you're going. You do not want to just head off in the park and find yourself uh, lost somewhere and no one knows where you are when you were back. So leave the sort of flight plan, if you will, with friends mm -hmm. and family back home. Uh, you'll want to make sure that you dress appropriately for the weather too. Right now, it's a little warm up here. It is. Uh, we're shooting this. <laughs> We're shooting this uh, Tuesday afternoon. We're standing in the sun. It's quite pleasant. It feels like a nice summer day. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is, uh, it is going to be up to 10 degrees cooler up here in the mountains than it is down in the valley where many of you are coming from. So make sure that you dress in layers when you come in. And uh, you don't have to wear them all at once, but make sure you can pull out that rain gear if it starts to rain or that light fleece if it starts to get a little chilly. All right, and then also when I go hiking, I get really hungry, like hangry is a real thing for me. So I, and that can strike at any point, and I tend to bring anything that's like, I don't know, salty or like will stay with me. Typically granola bars, those are pretty easy to pack. Um, but then also water. Water for sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you can, you can go quite some time without eating. It might not be pleasant, no. <laughs> but, you, but you can go much less time without drinking. So make sure you bring plenty of water and that you actually drink it before you get really thirsty. Yeah, definitely. So, um, and then, well, thank you Ranger Roy for bringing those to our attention. Um, so we're gonna circle back to crowds, like the crowds that we mentioned that can be found on the hikes that you want to avoid. Um, they can also be found at the entrance stations and Front Royal is one of those entrance stations that you want to avoid in the fall season. It can be super busy and backed up and it's so much better to just use the southern entrance stations. And then another way to avoid those crowds are our online passes. Can you tell us about those? Yeah, uh, you can go on recreation.gov and you can purchase your digital pass for the park. Uh, you can get a, a daily pass for the park. You can get a Shenandoah annual pass for the park. And if you do those in advance, once you get close to the entrance station, you can go into a special pass holder line and just show that, that digital pass. Of course, if you have your, your pass that you've purchased already on your, your card, make sure you have that handy with your driver's license yeah. and you can just show those to the entrance station people and zip right on through. Yeah, makes it really easy for you. All right, so we are going to wrap it up for today, but I thank you so much for joining us, Ranger Roy. It was me. a pleasure. Next week, we are going to have Ranger Scott back, and he is going to do a special for Halloween, and we are so excited to bring that with to you. So thank you all so much for viewing, and we'll see you again next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye.